Hey, I'm right back with another video. It's 7.13 p.m. It is August 22nd, and it's, did I say it was Thursday? Whatever, you know. <laughs> My memory is starting to, like, fade because I'm so tired. I really haven't slept much this week, you know, and I'm just doing a lot of thinking. Like I said, it's beyond my control. Can't help that. Can't help it at all. But so I decided to come down here and make another video because I'm kind of talkative right now, and I've been doing a lot of thinking about, um, you know, just the the realization of what my former family did to me, and then how they must have collaborated with my ex-husband's family and you know it to me it just seems absurd that anybody would ever think that I would forgive them for that um I mean especially when they knew that what I needed to do in life was so important to me it's like <laughs> I can't even understand how somebody would um think that or think that I should sit here and rely on uh, some one of these people to help me find a job. I don't want anything from these people, you know. Um, like I mentioned before, you know, there's some things that I find unforgivable, and putting somebody through mental trauma is definitely unforgivable. So I was thinking, you know, how, um, you know, my nosy family, ex-family, I love saying ex-family, um, because, oh, hang on a second, I gotta turn this air conditioner off. It's one of those days where I feel like it's just, I'm kind of screwed because, the air conditioner is bothering my sinuses and then when I turn it off then it gets really uncomfortable because I'm hot so it's like well you either get to be hot or you get to have sinus problems and I hate shit like that so bad but anyway um, you know I was thinking about um, you know I, I, I stay out of other people's business and I think that some people are constantly speculating you know um, first of all I'd like to say I'm never going to get back together with my ex-husband never I would be a fool to do that um, I don't it's not just that I, I mean I don't believe in his, the lifestyle that he comes from but um, also it's not just that it's the fact that you know someone who is going to basically manipulate my employment and then lie about it or keep things like that secret from me um, I, I there's that to me is like it's no different than torturing a woman it just is you know and so um, to think that I would ever reconcile you know um, I think my sister my former sister Tanya like I said mentioned I mentioned that I think that she was getting favors or she felt like she was there's a certain form of kinship with my ex-husband's family so she probably wanted to stay with that family bond I have no bond with these people I don't even know them that well um, I barely know them I met them like once or twice his aunts or whatever and then um, I have no connection there you know and uh, you know it's a their world is completely different than mine and you know I'm just letting it be that way I don't I don't want anything to do with those people or my former family or anybody who else who got wrapped up involved in this you know it, it some people would never want to make that sort of um, decision because some people feel so lonely they're, they're like well I, I need somebody everybody needs somebody okay but you do not ever let people abuse you okay and the way that these people act towards me everything that they do is abusive okay just kind of like the dumb job offer about the Hasidic Jew thing nothing against Hasidic Jews okay not a damn thing against Hasidic Jews it's just everything that they do they have such a morbid jealousy towards you that they everything that they do those little special favors that they do are actually something um, is some form of abuse so no you know um, that's just how it is so I was thinking you know um, you know, some people have a real big problem with, um, they get angry, and I think that's one of the reasons why, um, my family kind of jumped on this whole issue, because I'm not a very sexual person, you know, um, and so, they think just because, you know, you take walks, and you eat well, uh, 
they think that that has something to do with, well, she's lying. Deep down inside, you know, she really wants something. Otherwise, she wouldn't be doing this. Like I said, you know, I grew up with a very overweight mother. Okay, my mother would, at that time when I was growing up, I would consider my, my mother to be morbidly obese. Okay, she was a very big woman. Be long before, you know, I would say this epidemic of major overweight people started popping up, okay? And this has been like a strange phenomenon that's been going on for the last 20, 25 years, okay? Uh, I never accepted that as normal. I never accepted it. I understand that it's um, uh, a struggle, and I understand that people could easily fall into that, but it's not something that I personally believe that I want it for my life, okay? Um, and so that's just how it is. I, I choose to live a different lifestyle than my family. Um, I have different standards, I have different tastes, I have different hobbies, different interests. And sometimes you have somebody who's different in the family. And I think that's one of the reasons why my family bullies me so much. Um, because they think, you know, say one, say all, even though, <laughs> you know, they say, oh, when you're 18, you can do whatever you want. But at the same time, you got these jealous siblings that are doing something behind the scenes and all these other things. Um, I, uh, I will never forgive my siblings, especially my oldest former sister, Tanya, and her husband. I will never forgive them for what they've done. Um, I have been thinking a lot about what they've done in the last few days, and um, the resentment is probably what's affecting my sleep so much. Because, you know, I, I wish I could break their necks. I really do. Um, but <laughs> I can't, you know? Obviously, I have to show that sort of restraint, but I, I honestly tr and truthfully don't wish anything well for them. You know, um, I want to forget about them and move on with my life. And I don't uh, appreciate them trying to enforce their religious views on me, which I think are warped, and their lifestyle choices or anything else like that, especially when I never consented to something like that. Um, and the idea that, you know, a man is supposed to um, basically take ownership of a woman's life you know I, I, I I'm, I'm there could have been some encouragement by Jim Culligan to um, my ex-husband to do exactly that and you know that's he had no right to do that and that's something I do not believe in okay I know some people have different traditions they have different beliefs whatever but that's something I don't believe in I don't believe in people uh, for myself, okay? I don't believe <laughs> that those things should ever be done in a family unit type thing, okay? Why? Because much like what these people have done to me, they think, well, you know, I want to do this, and they determine what you make, what you're going to do, blah, 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 and, you know, no. It, it's it's not a good idea. It's, it deprives women of their basic rights, okay? And uh, that's one of the reasons why it's illegal. So, no. No, thank you. Um, so, anyway, I was thinking about, um, you know, my family's resentments towards me about not being interested in having a relationship with anyone. Um, you know, when I was younger, I, I would say that I, I was very romantic. Meaning, like, you know, I would watch certain things, okay? I never liked Harlequin movies or Harlequin books or anything like that. But some things were just like, oh, that's so beautiful. Like, if, if love could be like that. Like, I remember watching those, um, oh, what were those movies? Those Debbie Reynolds movies. Were they Gidget movies? Were those what those? No, Tammy movies. Tammy movies. And I remember thinking, you know, some of the, the romantic scenes were just like, oh, my goodness. But there's a difference between uh, romance and sex. I somehow see them completely separate. I, I think, you know, growing up, I, I too, like many other people, um, dealt with uh, people you know, making advances, I'm talking about, like, relatives making sexual, inappropriate sexual advances towards me, and I will tell you, I never appreciated it, but I didn't think, at the, I never felt traumatized by it, I figured, I chalked it up like, okay, this is disgusting, and I think that perhaps maybe because you're so young at the time, you think, well, it's kind of like kids playing doctor, maybe they're just curious, okay? But I now realize that I think some people, these people that I used to know, are actually very perverted. But that's not what made me not want to have a relationship. Um, but I think it, and, and there's, if I think about it though, it has a small part in it. It's that 
you know, some people take sex to a certain level to where it almost makes you repulsed by it. Like, some people's sexual appetites are so, um, what's the word for it? It makes you, it's tacky, it comes off as tacky, it comes off as selfish, it comes out as immoral, it comes off as degrading, it just, it's just something that I'm put off by. And throughout the years, you know, um, I had just developed an aversion to it. And there's a difference between celibacy, because, you know, some people who are celibate, they have these sexual urges, sexual desires. They want to have a sexual partner, okay? But for whatever reason, they're, whether it be religious or maybe they're just holding out for the right person, so they're, they're withholding or they're just abstaining from sex. For me, it's like, I don't care if I ever have sex again. I really don't, okay? Um, that's not celibacy. That is just something that I feel. I don't care about it. <laughs> I don't. Now, um, you know, I think that romance is cute. Like, you know, I, I'm a big fan of the sugar cubs. I don't know if you guys ever seen those little sugar, those little sugar cub bears. They're super adorable. Um, I became familiar with them on Facebook. And they're like these little drawn characters where like the little guy bear and the little girl bear, they're like super in love with each other. And it's very sweet and very innocent, okay? Um, where they're like holding hands and they're like kissing. It's so cute, okay? It's adorable. Do I believe that that sort of love exists? I don't. I think it does momentarily, but that's a discussion for another day. I don't know. I don't believe that that's the kind of stuff that's long-lasting. And when you think about marriage, marriage to me is an institution that I prefer not to be a part of, okay? I don't want to get married. I don't like what it represents for myself. For some people, it's good, you know? Some people enjoy being married. There's some people who say, well, I don't think I could ever live being single. I would never want to be that way, blah, 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 blah. For me, that's the only way to go. I, and I, that's just how it is. Um, and, and I'm happy this way. And, you know, and it's got nothing to do with, you know, um, the, the issue of me eating well or trying to eat well, you know, doing the best I can um, is because I grew up not thinking that that was something right for me. It was, it was to me, it wasn't what I wanted. I, I never believed that I, you should let yourself get like that. And if you do, you need to reverse it or do something to help yourself. Now, I know there's a lot of people who believe in, you know, positive body image, you know, accept yourself at whatever size, and that's fine for them, okay? But that's just not what I want for myself, okay? And uh, I, I don't believe that that's right for myself, okay? Um, but So that has nothing to do with me going out and finding someone. And then also, I've always had an interest in clothes. I love clothes. I like making clothes. I just brought my mannequin in um, yesterday uh, from the garage. And I kept thinking, you know, I want to start. I got these two shirts that, you know, I got them at the thrift store a while ago. And I kept thinking, okay, I'm going to go ahead and redo these. People love color. They like color. They like coordinating. They like shoes. They like, I mean, and then some women have, like, you know, expensive shit. Okay, I don't have expensive stuff. But I like matching. I like mix and matching. I do. I enjoy it, you know. And it's something that I feel uh, brings a different day, you know. It changes things. Like, you know, like just like some people buy things for their house. You know, I would love to buy better furniture, but I'm content with what I have. But what I do get, I try to make it as colorful as possible. You know, it's like you can change your reality and your mood as much as you can, okay. When you're gang stock, your mood's shit anyway. And you really don't have much control over it. But still, you know, why let yourself just sit here and wallow in self-pity? Why don't you pick yourself up and do the best of your ability? So, you know, those are the things I enjoy. It has nothing to do with that. So I, I think my family was just trying to, like, find some sort of inconsistency so they can say, oh, blah, 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 blah. You know, you really do want a relationship. You're just lying or whatever. First of all, whether I was lying or not, which obviously I'm not, okay, what business is it of theirs? Is it because they were trying to hold me back so that I, you know, wouldn't find somebody so that I could be stuck with married to Joel, who's abusive to me and going to continue to abuse me? Forget that. You know what I mean? That It's all so stupid, you know, and I, whatever. I don't even want to think about it. Now, some people might think, well, you know, you were really crazy about Stephen Lyles. I will tell you, I was very crazy about Stephen Lyles when I was growing up. Extremely crazy about this guy. And, you know, 
Um, I didn't know him very well back then. All I knew is that he was a good-looking man, very tall, and, you know, I would think about romance. When I would watch those uh, Tammy movies, I kept thinking, man, that could be me and that dude, like, <laughs> so, seriously. But it wasn't anything, I don't know, you know, you like who you like. You can't control who you like. You, you do, you feel those things just because you do, you know? And I remember telling this one lady, I was talking to an older lady, one time about this crush I had, and she's like, well, because I, I, it seems so illogical why I would have a crush on this particular person, right? And she's like, well, you know what? You can't help it. You just do. It's just one of those things, you know? They, they happen, you know? And that's just the way it is, you know? Um, but I, I'm, not a very, I'm not a very sexual person. And everything that some people assume what you do is somehow relating to sex. And it is for some people... It really is for some people. Some people do not have any motivation to, you know, get themselves in shape or whatever, um, unless, of course, they're trying to attract a sexual partner. I don't like anything out of shape on me, okay? Like, I look at people like Tina Turner. I look at her arms. Her arms are just like... Uh, her and Angela Bassett, her, their arms are so muscle-toned. They look fantastic okay that looks amazing okay my arms don't look like that um but I wish they did you know what I mean and uh because it just to me I have an appreciation for that sort of stature I do I have an appreciation for it got nothing to do with sex nothing to do with that at all you know um 